But to start today, we go to the United States. That's where on another key day for the restoration of relations with Cuba. In the last two hours, the State Department has announced that it has removed Cuba from the unilateral list of state sponsors of terrorism. Now this Friday, the 45-day deadline expired for Congress to override President Obama's decision to remove Cuba from that list. Now taking Cuba off the list was a key requirement for the two sides to advance towards opening embassies. To mark this day, President Obama made a surprise visit to a church in Miami that is popular with the Cuban community there. His spokeswoman says the president wanted to pay his respects to the Cuban-American diaspora, some of whom are bitterly hostile to improving relations with Havana. And as this opening of relations between the two countries continues to develop, let's go to live to our Washington correspondent, Jorge Gestoso, with the latest. Jorge, uh, let's begin by talking about what has happened here. Uh, the deadline expired. Effectively, Cuba comes off of that list. Is that correct? That is correct, Corey. And this morning, the State Department issued a press release saying, and I quote, the 45 days congressional pre-notification period is now complete and we are pleased to note that today, meaning Friday the 29th of May, the Secretary of State has rescinded Cuba's designation as a state sponsor of terrorism. Now, the next step will be published that information in terms of the red tape, in terms of bureaucracy, in the Federal Register in order to complete the process. What is extremely important is that according to two sources quoted by ABC News, next week is going to be the official announcement of the reestablishment of uh, diplomatic relationships, uh, relationships uh, announcing that the two embassies in the two capitals here in Washington, in Havana, are going to be opened. Uh, no date yet is going to be announced next week. But most definitely, the process of reestablishing relations is uh, extremely, um, uh, definitely very helpful, and it's a, a lot of optimism. And what it represents the most core uh, advantage for Cuba, because Cuba was really, really insisting to have his uh, name, the name of the country, removed from that list, is that now they're going to be able to use the banking system in the U.S in order to put together the embassy up today for the last 33 years, they have to do every single transaction in the U.S. in cash. And that was one of the issues that they were putting a lot of emphasis. The issues that are still remaining to be discussed in advancing this uh, um, Cuban-U.S. Uh, normalization of diplomatic relations are still in the case of the U.S., the U.S. is insisting that they want all the diplomatic personnel to be free to move inside Cuba. And in the case of Cuba, they're putting special emphasis that the U.S. stop to train, to give courses inside what is today the sections of interest in Havana to Cuban journalists. So there are still, in that sense, some, uh, some way to go. And another big development that we've been waiting on, Jorge, is the appointment of ambassadors and the opening of embassies. What can you tell us about that process and, and what could possibly stand in the way of that process at this point? Well, again, the, in, in terms of given the fact that uh, the reestablishment of uh, personal and uh, diplomatic relationships is something that is under the control of the executive branch, is something that President Obama has the authority to do. In terms of naming, for example, a U.S. ambassador to Cuba, is the Congress the one who has to approve it. And in that sense, uh, the people of the far right, basically representatives of uh, uh, Florida and uh, Miami, they have already sent, for example, Marco Rubio has already sent that he most definitely it's opposed to any naming of any ambassador. So 
the naming of a U.S. ambassador in Cuba is going to face uh, some uh, complications in the in the Congress. And so, what else can we expect? Um, let's assume embassies are open, ambassadors are appointed, um, and Cuba has already come off of that list. What might be the next major step as we continue to watch? this development of uh, historic thawing of relations between the two countries? Corey, in the long run, and there is a big, the big, big challenge is the normalization of relations. We're doing here about the re-establishment of diplomatic relations, but the, the key issue for Cuba is that the, uh, what in English call it the embargo, and in Cuba they call uh, in, with a different name, they say that the blockade uh, that are still in place, and Cuba has uh, serious problems that they cannot be any normalization of relations if the embargo or the blockade is not removed from the relationship. And in that case, it's again the Congress that has the authority to do it, and there's still a lot, a lot of resistance. To do so. Jorge Hestoso joining us from Washington. Jorge, thank you. And since Cuba and the United States made the announcement of the opening of relations, we have watched these steady developments. Let's take a look now at what led up to this latest historic move. Lawmakers have made no attempt to block the president's decision. This means that after 33 years of unjustly being placed on the list, Cuba will remove this as a part of the historic normalization of ties between both nations announced in December. Havana recently hailed Obama's decision. The unjust accusation will be removed. Cuba will be dropped off the terror list, and we will be able to appoint and have ambassadors. The Cuban delegation recognized the just decision adopted by President Obama to remove Cuba from the list of states sponsors of international terrorism. U.S. lawmakers were on an official visit to Havana. Cuba's official news agency reported that a U.S. senator leading the delegation, Democrat Tom Udall from New Mexico, said that there was a growing bipartisan support in Congress to lift the more than 50-year-old illegal blockade against Cuba. There's growing bipartisan support in the Senate for all of these uh, bills that I talked about, whether it's dropping agricultural restrictions, whether it's uh, lifting the travel ban, uh, whether it's uh, 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 the Internet. Still, many more meetings will have to take place, as Cuba insists on the United States and to its illegal occupation of Guantanamo Bay in Cuba and the immediate lifting of the embargo. But for now, the opening of embassies in each other's nations seems a greater reality.